This is the Tina 2 3D printer. I reviewed this tiny printer a few months ago. The same company that made this printer also makes a slightly larger version. This is my review of the Wido ME40 3D printer. The printer came out of the box mostly assembled. This appears to be the norm with most manufacturers recently, and it is a trend that I appreciate. One big difference is that the ME40 ships with the Z-screw uninstalled, so that is one extra assembly step to be aware of. Included in the package are the usual supplies, with a few nice extras. I expected to find a manual, hex wrenches, USB drive, side cutters, scraper, and test filament. The nice additions were a couple extra limit switches, one for axis homing, and one, I believe, is for the filament runout sensor. There's also a spare thermistor included with the spare parts, along with a couple additional screws and nuts. Assembly was fairly straightforward. The instructions provided with the printer are very clear and easy to follow. Additionally, included on the provided micro SD card are video assembly instructions for those that may struggle following along with the written instructions. To assemble, you just have to attach the gantry to the base, install the Z-axis drive screw, attach the filament holder, and then hook all the wires up. In addition to video instructions, the micro SD card also contains some pre-sliced models, the quick start guide, and a very thorough user manual. It also contains a copy of Cura 4.10 and Wido's own slicing software called Wii Builder. Once assembled, I cycled through all the options on the user interface and found it to be very simple and easy to navigate. Another trend in printers these days is a stripped down, simplified user interface. This is great for someone getting into the hobby, as it eliminates confusion and condenses the most essential elements of the printer down to a few touch-friendly menus. However, in doing so, it eliminates a lot of the options that are useful for fine-tuning your machine and getting it dialed in for perfect prints. I started by manually leveling the print bed, then I let it run through a 25-point auto level, after which I used a post-it note to set the Z offset. Once all that was taken care of, it was just a matter of loading the provided filament and selecting a test print off the micro SD card. While the test print is running, let me describe some of the features of the Wido ME40. The ME40 sports a generous 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume. The build surface is some kind of coated spring steel sheet. The hot end is built using an all metal construction that is suitable for printing high temperature filaments up to 300 degrees Celsius. The hot end is fed by a Bowden style extruder with filament runout detection built into the extruder assembly. The X axis is driven by a single drive screw and sports both a traditional limiting micro switch at the top of its travel as well as the aforementioned inductive auto leveling sensor attached to the hot end. The touchscreen is large and responsive, and like I mentioned before, the menus are easy to navigate. Under the hood, the ME40 sports a 32-bit architecture with silent drivers. Interestingly enough, the Z-axis driver is not silent. You don't hear the Z-axis during normal printing because it normally only moves in 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter increments. But when it's homing at the beginning and at the end of each print, it is remarkably, noticeably loud. The firmware is Marlin flavored, so theoretically it is open source and can be modified to suit anyone's tastes. 
The test print completed and it looks great. I should hope so, since it's just a simple box. Time to move on to better test models. I decided to jump in head first and try the hottest new benchmark, the Pin Support Challenge. I thought it would be fun to see if I could print the pin test straight out of the box without any tweaks to the system. And I'm happy to report it did print the test with no problem. I know the printer came bundled with slicing software, but I'm trying to stick to a single version of Cura, and it appears the ME40 is not yet supported on the latest version. Luckily, a quick search of the Wido website gave me a quick procedure on how to import the ME40 profile into the latest version of Cura, so I am able to keep things simple by having all my printers under the same version. With my new ME40 profile, I sliced and printed a standard Benchy. It seemed to print the Benchy well and with some minor stringing. Upon closer inspection, I did see some issues with the overhangs. This is PLA with 100% fan, so the relatively mild overhangs on the Benchy should be no problem for this printer. If you look closely at the hot end, you can see where there might be an issue. The design of the cooling duct leaves room for improvement, as it seems to be partially blocked by the heat block and the unobstructed portion blows on to the top of the nozzle itself, with no air hitting directly where the extruded plastic is laid down. I'm sure with time, someone will design a better duct, and even a better fan ducting system, but as of right now, it isn't great. With this in mind, I tried printing a couple tolerance tests, both of which failed. This makes sense, as with poor cooling, the layers will sag and fuse in areas where they should be open space. Just in case it was an issue with the sample filament, I tested with PLA, PLA Plus, and semi-flexible filament, all with similar results. I'm not sure what coating is used on the spring steel build surface, but prints stick to it extremely well. So well, in fact, that the bottom couple layers of the model would tear away from the print and stay on the build surface, no matter if I tried pulling the print off directly or by flexing the steel surface. I tried printing on the opposite side of the plate, but I couldn't get anything to stick on that side. I resorted to using a different spring steel sheet that had a PEI coating I had laying around that happened to be the same size. The issue with print sticking too well is reminiscent of using PETG on glass. If I use the ME40 build surface again, I will need to use glue stick, not for adhesion, but as a release agent so I can get the finished prints off of the surface. I spent time printing other models using different types of filament, and the results are all consistent with little to no cooling. Poor overhangs, inaccurate dimensions, lots of stringing. With all this in mind, let me review the pros and cons of the Wido ME40 3D printer. What I like. Price versus features. Large build volume, silent steppers, all metal hot end, touchscreen and auto leveling, all for an affordable price. This printer has the best price to feature ratio I have seen in the past year. Easy setup, easy operation. This printer is a cinch to assemble and the UI is very intuitive and easy to navigate. It includes a help button on many of the screens that describe in detail the purpose of the various functions found in the menu. This is a very useful feature for beginners. What I didn't like. This is personal preference, but I do not like inductive sensors for auto level. My experience is that there is enough error in the sensors that it throws off the Z offset when it runs a 25 point auto level at the beginning of each print. This isn't an issue with this printer alone. Every printer I own that uses an inductive sensor, either for the Z limit or for auto leveling, seems to require some amount of baby stepping at the beginning of each print. I much rather prefer mechanical switches to auto level because they seem to be a bit more accurate and repeatable in their measurements. Then of course there's the issue with the part cooling on this printer. The one silver lining to this particularly dark cloud is that this issue can be easily fixed with a little design and printing of an improved cooling duct because I really feel like it is the one issue that is holding back the incredible potential of this printer. In summary, despite my gripes, I really like this printer. Like I mentioned before, with a couple of minor tweaks, the Wido ME40 will be a powerhouse and potentially can be the best printer I own. 
This printer is relatively new, and as it gets into the hands of more and more people, improvements to the firmware, cooling, and other design elements will start rolling in. It would be nice if Wido could provide some of those improvements themselves, but my experience has been that most of these 3D printer manufacturers rely on the users to support their products, so I wouldn't expect Wido to do anything different. This printer brings a lot of bang for your buck, and I don't think you'll be able to find a better value for similarly outfitted printers by any manufacturer. Thank you for watching my review of the Wido ME40 3D printer. You really do get a lot of bang for your buck with this printer. And with a couple of modifications and tweaks, I think it will end up dialing in to be a really good printer. I, want, I did want to report on the cooling nozzle replacement. Once I replaced that nozzle, um, all my overhang problems went away. I still have some issues with tolerances, but I think I can compensate for those in the slicing software. If you are interested in picking up your own Wido ME4030 printer, I will leave a link down in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know what you think about this printer, if you have one of your own or just from what you've seen in this review. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.